This PGA Championship Picks Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Shady Rays. SGPN is teaming up with Shady Rays for Shady May. Get 50% off your Shady Rays using promo code SGPN. Then go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash shady for your chance to win $500. We're also brought to you by Edge Boost. Edge Boost enables you to double your bet with no interest. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash edge to get started today. Hey, this is Jeremy Rondick, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, baby. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second the Money Green with my partner of picks, Ryan. Real Money Kramer. What's happening, Kram? Dog. I don't know what's happened, but all the mentions of upstate, uh, upstate New York, bringing a lot of Soprano stuff into my oh, old Twitter timeline. Really, Sean? I know you've mentioned it in the past, yes. but there are a delightful amount of <laughs> just basically Twitter feeds dedicated to paying homage to the Sopranos, like Colby pays homage to the triple option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the same, and it's their entire online presence. Whatever sort of current event is happening. Oh. You know, it, it like uh, Doc uh, Rivers getting fired. You get a nice, uh, nice Sopranos related gif of someone getting whacked. Like any sort of thing that's happening in current events, they process through the Sopranos timeline. There is Sopranos Twitter, and it's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, someone made a reference to Dustin Johnson, like uh, when they're it's uh, w- when they're walking out into the woods. Uh, getting ready to to off the the broad. I'm blank on her name. Uh, and someone referred to uh, apparently Dustin Johnson is that in this reference going oh. upstate New York. Perhaps he might he get might get lost, lost in, the, in woods. the woods. Well, yeah, and, and uh, live hit maybe. <laughs> yeah, we are uh, we are uh, we are going to be all about upstate New York. Going to be breaking down the PGA Championship. Before we do, uh, shout out to new sponsor. That's right, Edge Boost. That's right. I mean, imagine uh, when it comes to sports betting buy now and pay later, it is here with edge boost. Again, you can double your bet with no interest, pay back the advance over four weekly equal installments, 0% interest. That's crazy. Again, they, uh, they match the deposit. You can use two X the funds on any legal sports betting site. My edge uh, boost double down play of the day was doc rivers getting fired. Lock that up. Uh, also all over the nuggets uh, for the series. I think we gave it out at minus 160. Not going to jinx it, but feeling wow. pretty good here. Uh, I will double down on the nuggets, uh, get them live. And again, special offer. Uh, just go to sports podcast.com slash edge to sign up today. Sports gaming podcast.com slash edge must be 21 years or older to use only valid legal gambling. Say it's problem gambling. Call 1-800 gambler. Sean, I love to double down. Even when I got that blackjack, you know? <laughs> Brian <laughs> has try. He always tries to scare the dealer by <laughs> when he gets a blackjack, looking at him going, should I double this? Should I double this? Hey, we're doubling down when it comes to having <laughs> golf gambling podcast hosts on this episode. It's a uh, it's major season, so you know we are joined by Steve Shermer, co-host of the Golf Gambling Podcast and Upstate New York expert. What's happening, Steve? Oh, it's a crazy week in Rochester. You know, anytime <laughs> a you know anything resembling a professional sports uh, story comes here. We lose our mind. Uh, it's a great golf uh, community here and we, uh, a great golf course. that has been revitalized. Uh, it's gonna be a great week up here uh, at Oak Hill country club for the PJ championship. Yeah. Which by the way, if you're not from there, amazingly sized flies, if you're driving on a freeway, it will sound like something's broken in your car. <laughs> maybe a winch, a rock pebble on the windshield, maybe a piece of hail falling from the sky. Nope. Just a, just an insect. Oh yeah. There's some, there's some, uh, there's some big bugs up there in no. upstate New York. That's that's bug country. Uh, <laughs> this gentleman uh, joining us as well, gentleman, using, huh? using the term gentleman loosely, <laughs> you know, him from the golf gambling podcast, Mr. Boston capper, what's happening capper. What's up boys. You guys reference the Sopranos, man. You yeah. want to talk about the, first of all, I follow those Sopranos Twitters and they're amazing. It but really is I, I remember you guys are my age. So do you got, like, I used to throw, I'd have people over on Sunday oh, nights. Yeah. 
and we would we would drink, we would eat, and then the show would be on. And then every week, somebody's new girlfriend would try to talk during oh, the fucking no, show. You could not. And I would and I would have to like be like, listen, you gotta shush. For a first you know, mistake there. And, and it, yeah, and it's, and then it would just escalate, and then it became like, listen, no new people. Like that's it. Like they gotta shut the fuck up during the show. It's like yeah, Fight we would, Club. We would play poker. That was the thing. I was in high school. You'd play poker and watch The Sopranos. No, no. uh no gumas or wives <laughs> invited. Exactly. I exactly. still remember we would get like when we were roommates in that Burbank house, we would get oh, these yeah. chicken parms from down the street <laughs> and then sit there with the chicken parm watching, Dago, watching Sopranos. There was this little uh, Tony's. There was right? this or little Cheech's. Uh, yeah, Cheech's opened <laughs> up, and I'll never forget my buddy. And then Cheech is, as you expect, just a guy uh, named Cheech who owns uh, an Italian it place. Queens, maybe. Just walking yeah. around with a chip on his shoulder, and my buddy uh, goes, "Hey, uh, how's the chicken parm?" <laughs> And he looks at me and goes, if it wasn't good, it wouldn't be on the fucking menu. <laughs> and he was right, because it was really Love good. It. And uh he scared my buddy into getting the chicken yeah, parm. Well, that's was it was delicious. Love it. All right, let's get into it. Speaking of delicious, uh, as a Rochester native, oh, uh, yeah. my buddy went to RIT, so I partied up there a couple fucking times. At a nerd school. Yes, huh? uh, a little bit of a nerd. <laughs> The nerds, nerds like to drink their Labatt blues. Uh, and they build pretty awesome contraptions <laughs> to consume alcohol oh, yeah. I mean, and, 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 and marijuana. Yeah. I mean, yeah. oh. Those gravity Those bones. engineers really <laughs> putting their degrees to work. Uh, one of the one of the things we did was we would get wasted and then eat a uh, garbage oh, yeah. plate, uh, which is like a local <laughs> delicacy up there in <laughs> Rochester. Uh, walk us through what it, what is a garbage plate, Steve. Well, I mean, it sounds disgusting, but basically the history <laughs> of the garbage not, plate not was, a good name. Uh, well, so there used to be there, this place called Nick Tahoe's and that would attract, uh, you know, college uh, ladies and gentlemen who have been imbibing uh, through the days. And then one particular uh, uh, guy said, Hey, why are you just going to be a plate with all that garbage on it? So he just <laughs> threw some Mac salad and burgers, and hot sauce the guy, just kind of mixed it up a little bit and drunkenly ate it. And that is how the garbage plate got born. And that is definitely a staple of this place. I know me personally, uh, probably 90% of all my garbage plates consumed have been after the uh, time of 11 p.m., yeah. Uh, yeah. usually on a weekend. But, so, you know, sometimes it can be a good hangover cure as well, you know, for Sunday football. Too, it's so. a White Castle rules, in effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you yeah. Didn't, no, normal meal hours, you'll be like, this is fucking gross. Either, yeah, but, you're uh, either <laughs> drunk or hungover, soaks up <laughs> soaks up a bunch of booze. Now, uh, you got Boston Capper, you, uh, you guys are going to be hanging out. You're going to be doing some live yeah. shows. Cameron, the producer of the Golf Gambling podcast oh, wow. up there as well. Capper, walk us through uh what you guys got planned. All right. So me and Cam are both getting there literally at the same exact time, which is very strange. It's like we're smooth. landing at the same exact time. Same uh, hotel too, right? Yo, same hotel. Uh, yeah, that, so was, he's, that was part of the agreement. Like, <laughs> all right. Part uh, of the agreement. Yeah, SGPN travel budget in uh in effect here. <laughs> can can Cam uh, share a bed with Capper? Well, yeah, I mean you got dude, the rooms dude, the, it's like a I don't even know what it is, yeah. like a Hampton Inn. It's like seven hundred dollars a night. It's uh, fucking it's insane. ridiculous. For Rochester, oh, especially it's everyone's crazy. cashing in in Rochester. Yeah, I mean, whatever. He he's bigger than I am, so he <laughs> says he's going to be L tide spoon. But I think I'm just going to beat him at golf and make him yeah. be a little spoon. There you go. I think that's what's going <laughs> to happen. Little spoon with the heart of a champion. All right. Actually, right. for content, that's great. Play for the bed. <laughs> yeah. Loser. Yeah, play for the bed. Exactly. Uh, I love gets that. The bed. I love that. I, and cousin Mush, I think. Asked me if he could sleep on the floor. Oh. I'm pretty sure I was drunk and I said, Yeah. So I'm oh. not quite sure what that's about. This is so uh, there's going to be that. like a golf gambling podcast, Truth or Dare. Yeah. <laughs> you guys going to get your PJs, little slumber party. Oh, wow. I like this. I'm excited. Yeah. It's going to be fun. And then uh, Steve's going to take us out to uh, a spot after golf. Going to I don't know, probably eat, drink. And uh, I, don't know. I mean, the thought is to go to bed early because Friday is going to be the hard night. Yeah. But you know how that works. If Thursday <laughs> will still be had. So, then, so wait, where's the fucking, what night is the live show? Yeah. So Friday, so night. Friday, Friday, Friday night okay. at big O country uh, at a uh, big O driving range. They have a top tracer base. They just installed those uh, Ooh, last year. Fun. Things like top golf. Think like top golf. Basically uh, we rented but, a couple but of real, but real clubs and balls. Ooh. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So you can hit there. Uh, I'll provide some food. You got beer and wine there. We're going to be there from Ooh. seven to nine. We're going to attempt to do a live show. We'll see how it goes there. But uh, I, I, you know, we'll uh, talk about some bets uh, that we're going to make for the weekend. Oh, talk about what's happening at the PJ Championship recap because we're going to all be there on Friday. It's going to be a good time. So if you want to meet myself, Boston Capper, uh, Andy Lack, and Brian Kirscher, two guys who also host golf gambling podcasts uh, in this realm here, uh, come meet us. It'll be a great time. Uh, um, you know, so show up. 
Right. Well, I, well, I have you. Does can I use? Can I travel with this? Yeah, mic? bring it with you. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm talking. Look like I'm talking a little the, shop the here. Well, I, I mean, yeah, just you know, Cam will solve the problems. <laughs> I, Cam, I was, that's I what I assume. You'll have a cigar in your mouth. I was told, <laughs> and a real bold move throwing it to Capper to do the promotion. <laughs> he did get a little sidetracked. <laughs> he Steve, was just like, "Yeah, Steve we're gonna came, get fucked up, right?" <laughs> Steve, <laughs> Steve, Steve came in and uh, brought it home there. Uh, by the way, what's all right? So we, the three of you, will be playing golf. Yeah, Thursday. Yes, on on, on, on Thursday afternoon. Yeah, we're gonna go to my club, uh, oh. and then we'll go to uh, dinner, get some drinks, and then Friday we're going to the PGA. Uh, oh yeah. Odds. Uh, well, so this is Thursday. Odds will be posted. I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, we need well, some Cameron, live updates. Cameron already fucking posted the odds. He put oh. himself as a minus six hundred favorite. Well, yeah. he's he the went. I think he's young kid. I think he's actually good at golf, so I think that could be an advantage. Uh, he's young. He might be athletic, and he went to A and M, so he's probably arrogant. <laughs> it's, Listen, it's, I don't care. My be my ability to get in somebody's head in a match play <laughs> event while we're playing golf. This this guy is gonna have the yips by whole four. Cam, is Cam in the chat? Uh, Cam's here. Cam, lots of videos. Yes. Lots of video. And of course, follow <laughs> at Golf Gambling Pod uh, on Twitter and uh, check him out uh, live on YouTube as well. So subscribe to their YouTube. Uh, you channel. know what? Alerts are getting turned on for Thursday. If, if we're going to have a, a live match I'm and, <laughs> and, and speaking of that, I did uh, I'm going to put it in this episode post for us, but if you haven't seen it already, I mean, you want to talk about amazing content. Uh, our buddy, uh, Steve Shermer over there on the golf gambling podcast, YouTube, just putting on a clinic, uh, walking you through the course with, uh, you know, Google maps or sorry, like Google, yeah. Like satellite shots and just a very incredibly thorough course. But why don't you give us a crash course on uh, what's going on at Oak Hill? I know it did host the, uh, the PGA championship 10 years ago. What's changed. What can we expect from this course, Steve? Sure. So I'll try and condense an hour and 40 minutes into about 90 <laughs> seconds here. So basically just what hold on, hold on. Was, pause for a second and just repeat that an hour and 40 minutes, Yes. a hundred minutes yes. of beautiful, beautiful content. Uh, how many days until this concept is stolen from by some other major oh, media? I'm sure. Company? I'm sure they're already Disgusting. chopping at the bit. Corporate gambling's all over. The algorithm doesn't even know to do with a hundred minutes of this content. Exactly. Right. Also sorry, free, Steve. by Continue. the way. So, yes. uh, and anyway, so in 2013, this was a really short golf course. All the trees have really been overgrown over the years. Just it needed some revitalization. So they brought in a guy named Andrew Green, who's done some work in some other Donald Ross golf courses to basically breathe some new life into it, restore it to its old roots. So what? So a, a bunch of the things they did. They rebuilt all the bunkers. They shifted them out too to kind of modernize with you know how far these guys hit the ball. Now it's really difficult to carry a lot of these bunkers. They're, you know, in really tough places. If you miss there, it's basically a penalty at that point. You can't get to the green. Uh, They also redid a lot of areas around the green with some hummocks and some mounds, more of these really penal bunkers around the green. They expanded all the greens. They edged them off too. Uh, And they also made a couple of new holes. They made a new par three by the entrance. Uh, Mm -hmm. It was an old Donald Ross hole that was just tarnished and ruined by the old architects. They brought that back. They combined holes five and six into uh, now this monster par four where there's just absolutely nowhere to miss. You got water, right? Bunkers and deep left, rough left. Uh, And this is just going to be a true, a true championship test. Uh, 7,400 yards, par 70, a lot of long approach shots. If you like tournaments like wing foot or Beth page black, this is probably going to be for you. It's going to be a grind. It's going to be tough. Uh, making pars is going to be a premium this week. I don't think there's going to be a ton of birdies. Uh, it should be a really good time, and I'm looking forward to seeing it, you know, in person, with my uh, my own eyeballs. Have you have you ever played this course, Steve? Or no? I put. I played it about ten years ago, though this was before so, the renovate before the renovation. Sounds, and, sounds pretty uh, different. I mean, I, I I caddied there when I was a teenager, but yeah, it's you know the land is still the same, tee to green, it's still the same, still really the same, you know, narrow fairways, still the same topography and everything, but. They just, it just, it, they gave it basically a makeover, a much needed makeover to make it tougher. And it just, it looks, it looks stunning. Everybody who's been there, anybody, you know, who knows golf architecture, they've been just raving about the place. It's, it, they've done a really good job with it. I think it's going to show really well this week. Love it. Uh, and, and it seems like, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically you need accuracy. You need to avoid the bogeys. You need to be able to hit long and straight, right? Yeah, pretty much. You know, th- there's been a couple tournaments where it didn't matter, you know, how accurate you were. You just hit it as far as you can because Noah's hitting fairways. With this one, though, there, you know, Andrew Green put subtle little 
many penalties off each fairway to like, if you really blast it offline, you know, there's all these humps and mounds where, it, you know, not only are you dealing with thick rough, but you're also dealing with maybe a downhill lie where, you know, if, if, if you just keep it straight in the fairway, uh, you should be fine. Uh, this rough, you know, players have been just saying how thick it is, how gnarly it is to just get a club head on it. It's not all that long, but it's very thick there. So, uh, and I, I think it's very fair to be able to hit the fairway this week. I know it's really narrow, but some of these other tournaments where it just turned to a bomber fest, it just wasn't fair to hit a fairway at that point or how to hit the approach test into the greens. It just really favored a longer hitter. I mean, length is an advantage, but I don't think you can spray it everywhere this week. I did. Uh, you know, I like to watch uh, off season workout videos of, of athletes. Well, I also like the pictures when they throw the golf ball into the rough and it just disappears to, sh <laughs> oh, yeah. to show you how ridiculous the rough is. They, the guy dropped a golf ball from like six inches and the ball just disappeared into this grass. It didn't look that long. <laughs> yeah. I would imagine that that seems like you got to have onions in this one. Tiger woods called Oak Hill the co uh, quote toughest, fairest course I've ever played. Wow. That sounds uh, yeah. I mean, just just dapping up the PGA there. <laughs> yeah, so doing fair. anything just, you can. Just so fair. <laughs> doing anything you can to uh, kiss their ass. Uh, coming up here, I, I, Capper, I assume you're all in on uh, Rory McIlroy uh, this Fuck week, no. right? <laughs> No. Why, why, why are you Rory McElroy? And we'll get to our DFS idol. Everyone enjoys when Kramer and I pick out some uh, DFS winners. He's he's third favorite. I mean, he's up at the top here uh, when it comes to uh, you know expected uh, outcome here for the tournament. You're not in on Rory this week. No, I'm not. And by the way, so you need a win, Sean. He's got you the last two times. By the way, really? Because I, no. I track, I track, really? I track what the lineups are. You got to You got to double check and, your tracking. I swore I won last time. You oh, I, pre I appreciate the, you uh, doing this, <laughs> but there's a long the, uh, track record of this kind of behavior from Sean. No, the, uh, yeah. Carson Wentz is a franchise quarterback. Yeah. yeah we, oh, we, we I was slightly off on that. that the, I was uh, slightly off on that. <laughs> yeah. Just a tad. Listen, he did Rory help McElroy, them win the Super Bowl. Listen, and listen, Rory should be able to play well here. Right. And it's always dangerous to try to psychoanalyze, especially a fucking golfer. Cause it's a four day tournament. You have no idea what's going on. But like the Masters, right? When when you guys told me that he flew in a fucking shrink and I lost my goddamn mind, <laughs> that was uh, great. and and thank God for it, right? I got off of him and I got on to run. Like I like I was like, no, I'm not. We, we got betting. nominated for uh, mental health awareness. That episode uh, was really <laughs> was really pivotal in raising awareness for mental health. Well, listen, listen, I'm, I'm not shitting on mental health, right? No. Like everybody, everybody needs to take mental health seriously. Like every, yeah, seriously, like that's not what it's about. What it's about is it's I'm gambling on somebody. It's the same thing as, <laughs> you know. Trying to trying to psychoanalyze a golfer is insane, right? But if you if you think about how you look at other sports, right? You, when you look at the body language of a team or a quarterback or you know uh, a high goal scorer in, in hockey, uh, you're like, oh man, something's not right. Like he's off mentally, and golf is so mental. Yeah. That how do you not try and get in their heads? Yeah, it's I just can't get behind them. And look, the numbers kind of right. Like if you like Rory getting a fourteen is pretty nice, right? When you only be getting them at seven and things like that, like it's very nice, but uh, I just don't, I, I just can't do it. I can't get behind Rory. Uh, I have a longstanding beef that he certainly knows about with him <laughs> and uh, that he knows about. <laughs> I so, like this. Yeah. I just, I, I can't get behind Rory. I, I just, until he shows me that dude, he's got two missed cuts and four stats and look, all the stats in the world are going to show that this is made for him. He can carry it. As far as they need to carry it, uh, his long iron play is good. He's good out of the bunkers. He's good on bent. Like, but I don't know, man. I just can't. I, I can't do it. And I just go against the stats. It's a gut thing for me. And uh, listen, if I got to eat shit, I got to eat shit. But uh, well, I'm not, I'm not I, I mean, again, I like back in when it comes to any sports. I like back in dogs. Oh, huh? Rory. He opted out. He's 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 gonna lose three million dollars of his player impact program payout. Essentially, the PGA was like, "Hey, if you're a big name, we're gonna pay you extra." He's gonna lose three million dollars because he skipped out on the RBC Heritage. That is, that's insane. I, I, am I missing something it's, here, Steve? Um, I mean, he's got. I mean, that's a drop in the bucket for for Rory. But yeah, I mean, coming off the Masters dollars. where. I mean, come out the Masters where he had such high expectations, fell flat on his face, and you know, making the trip over to Harvard Town, just had to get his head right. So, I mean, look, <laughs> I mean, there, there's been some a, a story that came out today that 
Uh, I mean, he did not play well at Quill Hollow either. That was some high expectations for him because he really damaged that course. He's, it was a surprise he didn't play well. Ended up bringing in his coach this week to help him. He had mm-hmm. to go to Tiger Woods' house because oh, apparently wow. Tiger said that he saw a swing flaw. So at this point, I mean, maybe is it's that, all fixed. We'll see, it, but that, he's still searching at this point. Is that Tiger's line to get you back at the house? Hey, uh, sweetie, <laughs> saw a little bit of a swing flaw. Why don't you come over to my place? We'll work through that in the simulator. Mm, Paige, uh, but whatever I, it is. But I was, so nice. he skipped that event, and the the problem is, is you hear even players grumbling about it. He was one of the PGA water carriers during this whole thing, yeah. and he and he made this fucking schedule, <laughs> they, and he skips out on it. Yeah, they, they, they like went out of their way to be, hey, PGA, let's figure out a way for us to get paid extra uh, because we're such big names. They do and it, get these and then guys, he walks but the, away. But it's to force them to to show up at these events. And if you didn't show up, you were going to get a penalty. And the and the and the you know, porch carrier was Rory, and he fucking was like, "Me, I ain't playing. I'm taking my long <laughs> on home." Like, like, uh, no, thank you. I fucking yeah, come on. I need God a dog. Damn, I, I need I someone who lives, breathes, he, he, eats golf. He Let's had, go. He had to put his mind right, and yeah. maybe he's just getting ready for the football season. <laughs> Certainly makes it easier to rip for the Bills when Josh Allen's throwing the football. <laughs> uh, him saying, uh, fellow football <laughs> fan, like you really kiss up to the upstate New York crowd, uh, lathering up Josh Allen. And and kind of, I mean, what better comparison to his own game than Josh Allen, a guy with a ton of hype who has never, uh, you know, has 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 it really come through? Whoa. I mean, r- no wonder Rory McIlroy uh, likes let me Josh get off the Allen. Screen for this for this take, uh, Bill's Mafia. Rory McIlroy is the Josh Allen of golf, and I mean that as an insult to Josh Allen. Win a championship uh, game, a conference championship. Game. Uh, it's almost disrespectful to Rory, right? It is I mean, disrespectful. Rory, Rory has Rory extremely is, disrespectful. It's extremely <laughs> disrespectful to Rory. <laughs> And I hate Rory. And uh, I know the mouth breathers uh, Rory's, in Buffalo Rory's, are going to get on you. Rory's <laughs> Rory's won some majors, right? But there, that'd be like if there were four Super Bowls a year. Maybe Josh Allen would luck into one of those. No shot. Uh, no shot. No, <laughs> no, All right. No, let's no. get to uh, everyone's yes. favorite DFS idol. Before we do that, shout out to Shady Rays. I know the guy's going to be hitting the course. Oh, you got uh, Shady Rays just go perfectly with golf. Love my Shady Rays. Great loss and replacement policy. If you're like Capper, taking your Shady Rays on a golf trip, I mean, who knows? It's a baby. Who knows where those things could end up? You break them, no big deal. Shady Rays has you covered. And Canada, Australia, New Zealand, United Kingdom, they ship to you guys as well. Love my Shady Rays. Uh, ShadyRays.com promo code SGPN fifty percent. Off when you use the promo code SGPN and then take your receipt head over to sportsgamingpodcast.com so shady for your chance to win five hundred dollars in the Shady May contest and of course we're also brought to you by Takafi confidence is king I mean when it comes to golf and also when it comes to dating again if you've struggled to find worthwhile connections it can be difficult. Uh, feel your best. Meet new people. Talkify does the heavy lifting. All right, they do the they do the trolling around. Find you that match. Ask all those awkward questions beforehand, so you don't have to do that on the date. You can just focus on the dating, aka the fun part. They screen and select potential matches. They do background checks, video interviews. Talkify does it all, and. Committed to finding you your match. 80% of their clients have met their person within the first 12 matches. That is an amazing stat. Right now, Talkify is offering our listeners 20% off when you become a client at talkify.com slash S G P N T A W K I F Y dot com slash S G P N for 20% off when you become a client. Talkify.com slash S G P N. Oh yeah. Let's go. Talkify. We're here. We're doing oh. it. Kramer? It's Sean. I- Sean, I got a question for you. Yes. How many how many listeners do you think of ours uh, get screened out on the background check? <laughs> what that is, is what is that the is percentage? Unfortunate. They're they're probably hopefully they're not getting uh yeah, hopefully Talkify <laughs> doesn't have a like a DJ only filter where all our <laughs> listeners are just completely filtered out. But I think that's Well, that's a filter. DJs yes. meeting DJs. But then I, DJs yeah, DJs, maybe exactly. they comb out and they match them with some female DJs. Exactly. Uh, uh, listen, this business plan from Talkify is amazing. They took yes. something from 1950 that worked in like small neighborhoods, and now they're like, yeah, we just do it on the internet now, and we can expand it out. I like that. Capper was down at the uh, Italian American uh, <laughs> Center. 
I'm just kidding, Cap. I know you're Irish. Uh, <laughs> hey, let's get to can, it. Can Cameron? I start? You, yeah, I mean, I start. Apparently, you're the, the you're the wizard two time, over two, here. Two time champion so far. <laughs> two time champion. I, like I lost that. the other notebook with all the other stuff, but uh, well, the notebook that I have. The uh, he bleached two. the servers. How, co- so how, I'm, I'm too, how convenient. I'm two away from the calendar grand slam. Okay, got it. Uh, <laughs> like this lineup started getting made the second the second the Masters was over. And I was filled with regret for not having my guy and the picture you see on the YouTube thumbnail, (laughs) Mr. Brooks Kepka. Brooksy. I don't give a shit about anything. He's the first guy in my lineup. I'm back to my guy. It sounds like this is gonna be a tough course. That's what I thought I heard Steve say. And who what better than have a guy with onions the size of fucking uh, what a garbage plate. (laughs) Damn, I screwed that up. (laughs) You were you had that joke written. What are you doing? Fuck. Uh, yeah, no, I just, I was, I was always going to start the lineup with Brooks Kepka. So, uh, ready to take my beating. And I'm also kind of as a contrarian guy, I'm, I'm, mm. I'm starting to, it's kind of a hot take, but I, I could find awesome. myself, uh, entertaining live tour action. <laughs> if it means more Brooks Kepka in my life. All right. Is for- it a bad pick? Steven Capper? Yeah. Weigh in guys. Steve got Steve, uh, I mean, listen, I am probably of the two of us, the uh, biggest fanboy of Brooks, oh, there uh, we go. a lot go. of happy gambling memories uh, with Brooks Kepka for me personally. So it was heartbreaking to see him go to live, but I mean, if you watch my video, I mentioned this specifically at the, at the end of the, the video there, I, I think with some of the changes made to Oak Hill, I think this really suits a guy who hits a power fade. Uh, there's a lot of really crucial T shots on a lot of really hard holes that demands a long left to right T shot. And that's just Brooke kept you know, that's his bread and butter right there. Obviously really good at PGA championships. You know, they tend to set those things up pretty fair and kind of in a consistent manner. Several really good finishes, obviously a two-time champion there. Everybody's making a lot of comps to Beth Page Black this week. Uh, I really like Brooks this week. I don't love the outright number, but I expect him. You know, he did the exact same thing he did before the Masters, and he does this a lot where, you know, it's kind of an under-the-radar, really stress-free final round, gets himself you know, ready, and then he just is ready to go, you know, come Thursday. So, yeah, I, I, I definitely am in on Brooks this week. Mm-hmm. Capper. So I, I think he'll be fine. The problem is, is that Mm. he is just, he's getting so much steam, Uh right? Like he's getting a lot of steam. Like the ownership right now doesn't look out of control, but I think uh, by the, by the time Thursday rolls around, people are going to move into him or maybe they're just better outright and they're leaving Malone at DFS. He's still over 10, uh, over 10% owned. uh, And he's, he's right above like Uber chalk. So it might be okay. And listen, I like Brooks's game. Uh, He definitely, should fit this if he's old Brooks and yeah, man, uh, like I, I don't, I don't hate it. Uh, I think if you're making like a single entry lineup, obviously. They, uh, so I think if you're only doing one lineup, then st- are you starting with Brooks and you're ignoring everybody else above? Yeah. I think that's foolish. <laughs> Yeah, that's I exact. think that's well. Hold well, on, hold on. What? All right. So, why do you think that's foolish? I mean, so because I think I, I think the winner is co- I think the winner is coming from above that. Okay, well, it's one guy. It's Chuck. Then. Right. Yeah. Okay. Chuck. Well, I mean, look, I mean, you don't like really like Scotty this week. You don't really like Rory this week. So, huh. yeah, it's wrong. I mean, that's not really an outlandish <laughs> take to start your That's fair. That's fine. Brooks, that's fine. I'm just saying about the guys above him. Well, Listen, you, if he, you guys, if he, you guys if we're going to have, have scoring this week, right? You even said it, right? There's not a lot of birdie holes, right? So, it's a bunch of paths. So, finishing position <laughs> is going to be much more important. <laughs> this week than it is on a typical DK week because bunch remember, of, bunch of remember Friday night, watch capper say par live. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, if you thought Kramer, uh, thank was, you, Steve, if you thought Kramer's take was that land oh, wow. starting with oh, Brooks oh. <laughs> enter, enter Sean green. I'm starting with a man by the name of Tony fee. Oh, wow. he is okay. number one strokes gained approach to green. Uh, two wins and four top tens this season. He hits it hard. He hits it straight. This is a great match. Uh, this is like a perfect match for his game. I mean, Talkify probably set this up. Oh wow, uh, Steve. What do you think of Tony Finau? I mean, I, I bet him outright. So obviously, okay. I think very high of him this week. I got a good number where he's at now, right now in the odds board. I probably would have some pause, but regardless, though, I mean, the resume on him is really good. Obviously, really long off the tee, great long iron player, great on bank grass, great on some Donald Ross greens as well. Mm. 
uh, good out of the sand. Now, the one thing about him is that sometimes during his career, he has had trouble kind of controlling the tee shot. He's done a better job over the last year, uh, maybe powering down a little bit, sacrificing a little bit of length for some accuracy. Uh, you know, he was struggling a little bit off the tee this year for a little bit, but it's because he made a swing change uh, back in January. Last two tournaments, he has been absolutely killing it off the tee. Uh, he's been he's incorporated a fade into his arsenal as well. I think that's really important this week. Um, you know, and the the PJ Championship has been very kind to him. A lot of good finishes. A lot of good finishes on some tough, narrow, thick, rough golf courses in his career. And the PJ has been a major championship that's bred a lot of first time winners. So uh, I really like Fino this week. He is very popular though. Uh, so you have to diversify somewhere else. Mm. Well, not so bad, Sean. Not so bad. Look at look, what about uh, what about you, Capper? How say you, Tony? So Fino? I, 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 Everything everything you said is correct. Uh, like I looked at him for an outright. Uh, by the time uh, I got a look at him, uh, odds were too low. But he is uber jock, so you're gonna need to get uh, different. However, oh, I, like I guess I guess maybe fucking starting at Finau is even though he's chalky is contrarian because I can't imagine what the rest of your lineup looks like. So, Sean, the rest of the world here, doesn't even know. This is where we get. They don't this see, is where we get interested. They don't see us coming. All right. So <laughs> I knew I knew that Kepka would be chalky. And I, I I was a little shocked to find that Steve enjoyed the play. Mm. So in in preparation to know that these guys were going to give me shit about being chalky to start, all right, let me pivot here. And I think I actually don't know how many. I was going to come in with a real hot stat, but I don't actually know the number. So I'll just say this: this guy I don't think will put be popular, but he does sit inside the top twenty-five in both driving distance and driving accuracy over the last fifty rounds. A very arbitrary number of rounds that I took from this article. Patrick Cantlay, ninety seven hundred. Yes. I I believe did I if I did this right, he might be contrarian too, Sean. Capper, you lead off. He is absolutely not contrarian. Damn. Uh, he's probably he's probably uh he, he's probably the sec well, I guess Dan so he's the third most owned in the in the nine K <laughs> range. But look, Brooks isn't actually chalky, okay. right? So so just I was just saying, he was, I was saying he was catching a bunch of steam on like Twitter and and that type of shit. And I typically just go the other way uh, Got it. when when everybody jumps on somebody. But I love Cantlay. Uh, I bet him outright. He's the best uh, bet grass putter uh, in this field. Uh, he's good ish with his long irons. He's long and straight off the tee. It's just a matter of time before this guy wins a major. Tell, tell me you co-sign, Steve. Tell me you co-sign. <laughs> I mean, I also bet Cantley, so I have nothing. I have nothing further to add with Capper, other than the fact that a couple of little nuggets there. Uh, I mean, so a lot of these guys who have been first-time major winners over the last like ten years or so, you know, they started sniffing around contention uh, pretty, and then pretty soon after. Uh, they got to win. You can point to a lot of examples of guys who are either 54 hole leader or in top 10 heading into the final round. Now, Cantley has done that his last two majors, and that's been the knock on him is that, and that, you know, he's been underachieving in majors, but top 10 at the open, you know, he was got in the mix of the masters and then he just faded on Sunday. But the fact that he's starting to actually get into the mix is encouraging. The weather doesn't seem like it's going to be all that great. At least this weekend, the masters had really terrible weather uh, during it. And he still actually did pretty well. So uh, that's encouraging for me. That's been a red flags, you know, in his career is if he can handle bad elements, he did well there. So I, you know, co-sign exactly what my uh, co-host said. Uh, I love him for this golf course. So McElroy fourteen to one, Cantlay sixteen to one. Just giving you the twin prices. Finau twenty-two to one. What's Brooks? Um, probably twenty-two. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Brooks is uh, twenty to one. I'm mm-hmm. seeing right now. All right, for me, this gentleman uh, four top tens and eleven starts already this year, including top seven at the Masters and. Much like our own Steve Shermer, hometown edge. He grew up in upstate New York. Sleepy Hollow was his home course. Very similar to what he is playing. Oh, uh, Steve! Oh, Steve hates this co- angle. They're both covering their faces. I'm I'm taking Cam Young, ninety two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> this is Steve's Steve's. Uh, YouTube.com/slash sports. What's Cam up, Steve? Like, what, yeah. What's wrong with Cam Young? I mean, what's not Are we gonna call a guy from Detroit playing hometown in Rochester? Because it's actually closer to Detroit is the Westchester at this point. You know, last year this actually pissed me off last year because ESPN put out the early winner for the PJ Championship. Oh, kill was Cam Young because he'd have the home crowd with him. 
Well, we don't like people from New York City up here. I mean, between it's Bill's country, they cause us a lot of taxes up here because of everything they're spending down there. No, I, we're not going to be rooting for Cam Young this week. So regardless oh. of that fact, though, I mean, I, so that's a guy who I was targeting cool. about a couple months ago because I thought some of the weather elements might actually just say, okay, it's not going to matter if you hit a fairway. You just got to hit it as far as you can. Now it's not really going to be like that. I think some of his warts around the game, his game is going to show up as far as around the green play and with his putting as well. So I've kind of cooled a little bit on Cam Young, other than the fact that just the narrative that he's the hometown guy just. I was uh, going to ask if you went to high school with him, but I'm assuming <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Cap or Steve, how, you, how, Steve, how far is the drive from Rochester <laughs> to wherever part of Westchester he was from? It's like five and a half hours. <laughs> right. So it's right down the so street. So Sean, I'm Sean. I'm going to say this to you. It takes from where I grew up to where in Philly, where you grew up, it yeah. takes four hours and fifty minutes. So technically, <laughs> any Boston and Philly yeah, hometown people, kids. it's all home game. It's hometown all home kid, game. Cam it's Young, Cam Young. How say you, Capper? <laughs> Listen, uh, so this was, I wanted him to win prior to this because he's a guy that hits it long and straight, just got a fucking new caddy on the bag, which should really help them. He looked really good at the match play. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. He, 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 he it's just not that he's not good around the green. And See, uh, you, I'm, you, Cameron Kerr in the uh, chat is uh, encouraging uh, me to stick to my guns. And he well, is a fellow Cameron Cam. Kerr also thinks he's he's six to one to beat me at golf when I'm going to berate him for 18 <laughs> holes. And he thinks he can, he can mentally sustain that. I do. Th I, I will agree with Capper. The, the young people are mentally weak. You should be able to break him. No problem. Uh, also Cam, 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 Cam young 30 to Cam, one uh, Cam Kerr is mm. a content producer for us, Sean. Yes. So perhaps Perhaps he's uh, working a little double duty right now. Yeah, getting you, getting you uh, to go down the dark alley. All right, I, I would, I, I would say, listen, like, like I did, I like, I wanted him to win prior because this is somebody who we've been waiting for him to break out. Super long, super straight, good at the fucking majors. Uh, dude, he passed Rory at the Open. Like he, can't, nobody talks about that. Like he came in mm. second at the fucking Open to Cam Smith. Rory just shat all over himself. Um, and uh, listen, I, like, this is a spot for him. I know. Uh, uh, lots of lots of friends of mine in the in the golf game community have nice long shot tickets on them, mm. and I would like that to happen for them. But I just don't think the form is there, um, and it's, Start, it it could be it could be a good DraftKings play, but because um, because it is kind of contrarian you, at this point. Uh -huh. It is that, it. that's the silver lining. There yeah, you go. there we go. Silver so lining feels a little bit like uh, you're Great you're movie. dealing with a deficit right now. Uh, before hey, I before like they it. play the I games, like where I'm at. Which, by the way, I mean, you know, not exactly like these guys were steering all us right, all the come way. Come on, let's go. Come all right, Neiman, <laughs> not a seventy nine hundred. I'm also in sticking, Joaquin Neiman. Sticking with my live tour uh, situation, which you know, three in a row, back to back top ten finishes on the live tour, and uh, as Steve would will remind us, great on the bent grass. I'm also in Joaquin right. Neiman. Uh, love his uh, love his uh, flight path of his ball low. <laughs> Straight off the tee. That's what you need. Don't get don't get wobbly. I'm also on Joaquin Neiman seventy nine hundred. I I also prefer a low uh, <laughs> ball trajectory. There you go, Steve. How say you? On As Neiman? we get older, the ball trajectory gets lower. <laughs> it keeps and going lower, lower and lower. Right, and lower. It, it is a pendulum, so there's yeah, there's more distance travel. And I wore there. boxes my whole life, so I, I imagine no, if I make it to eighty, that's not be true. Hold on. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I didn't need that visual. That is a disgusting <laughs> that's how they, act. That's how they scared you to wear in like uh, the briefs when you were younger. If you know yeah, the box of briefs. Balls yeah. are gonna drop into the toilet. I was See? like, oh fuck, I need those. And Haynes fucking <laughs> fake news campaign, son of a bitch. Uh don't don't uh, don't disparage Haynes. Yeah, we, they we, might uh, get a Haynes out of it. Uh neither one of you guys are getting a fucking Haynes ad. <laughs> oh, they might Zero shot. <laughs> they might be inserted uh, in just because I wear these baggy clothes. Uh Steve, how say you <laughs> on our on our bud on our uh, on our pick that we both have together, Joaquin Neiman? Yeah. I mean, you both nail it. He's really good on bent grass. Obviously, he won in the uh, the Greenbrier on bent grass. He did very well uh, at the Wilmington Country Club last year. T eight there, really got some other golf courses that kind of have some similar comps. This place like Torrey Pines, uh, Olympia Fields as well. He's been really good in some of these classic narrow, thick, rough golf courses. So yeah, I mean, listen, he's an elite driver. Uh, he's been a little up and down 
uh, on Lib, but he's actually posted some decent finishes uh, recently. He did well at the Masters, too. So that's a guy I think has a lot of talent. I think the world of the kid, he is probably going to draw about double-digit ownership, potentially, maybe one of the more popular options in the upper 7,000s. But I just believe in the kid's talent at this point. So, uh, you know, I'll I'll be fine with that pick. Capper, I'll say you. Neiman is seventy to one. He's a, he's an interesting uh, dart throw here. Uh, late, he's not gonna win. He's not gonna win. But listen, <laughs> well, what I'm, does that I'm have to do with my long shot bets? No, come on, I'm trying to have fun. I'm not trying to win. Jesus. Well, come if you want to have know? fun, take Keegan at one ten. Don't fucking bet. <laughs> fucking you Joaquin love you love Keegan though. I can't. Of course, I love Keegan. Keegan is <laughs> such a chowderhead name. I'm going Seamus Power. I don't care what you say, Capper. <laughs> Shut the fuck. Did you just say it like that? <laughs> You're a goddamn Irishman. Did you say Seamus? Lo- yeah, we already we already did this bit. I'm trying Edwin, to get you worked oh, up. Jesus Christ! Oh, All right, my God. So we. Uh, it's Neiman, like- is, Neiman is awesome. His swing is beautiful. He's uber fucking chalky. Damn it! Uh, Feels like we're chalky, yeah. but we're doing we're we're team. We just we like playing the best plays. Yeah, but we don't have any of the top guys, so inherently oh, yeah. this becomes because uh, we're pretty idiots for not having Rom or, or I, I just don't right, like any up, of the chalky. Seventy eight hundred. He used to be on the drip squad. A, you know, honorary member, no matter what. Uh, if you're from Australia, unless you have a kid named Dash. Uh, shout out to Nagels for bringing that to my attention. Adam Scott does all the things mm. you want someone to do. Coming in hot. Two straight top tens, and Sean, he's gained twenty strokes over his last three events. All right, uh, th- that's all I got on Adam Scott. He was a fun guy. I he fit perfectly. I had seventy nine hundred left. He was the last golfer I put in the lineup. Capper, you go first. I only got four, I only got four guys from you. What are you fucking talking about? This I know. I'm just. I'm, I'm explaining. He's the last guy. Like he was. There's not much more thought. Oh, he, he was he was he, your last he one. He fit in. the gotcha. model, aka he was under <laughs> seventy nine hundred. He had left, and I like him. <laughs> and he play. He has he has some distance. Uh, he's got a yeah. good short game, and like I said, he gained he's gained a bunch. So Capper, tell me that's a good play, and it's not. It's chalky. not. Damn it's it. not. Adam Scott. Uh, he's not. He's not great off the tee, and he's not great around the green. And okay. I know what he did at Wells and the whip. So who would you I, play here instead? Let's just say you. So, <laughs> So I got so right, you got Steve, Brooks well, Can, you got Brooks Cantley Neiman so far right yeah so Steve and your, well, la, and your last guy in was well no Scott. I have I have two more guys but they weren't well, last I know but then. your last guy in so the the salary range I would I would prefer to play Taylor Moore at a, a little less ownership mm. uh, he's better with his long irons he's still shaky around the green but at least he's a young guy all right uh, Steve what do you think. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm not sure my co is looking at with his short game numbers because that's always really been doing for the last like 12 it, months or so. It's really all short game and putting with him. The irons have been bad with him, which is which is which is definitely trouble. true. I mean, you just point out the fact with Taylor Moore, his long <laughs> irons are much better uh, than Adam Scott's. But I mean, look, I mean, he has a couple decent finishes lately. Did his irons okay at Wells Fargo? Didn't it was all putting really at the Byron Nelson though. One of the few guys have actually played this golf course before, even though it was pre-renovation. Um it's okay. It's a, mm. it's an okay pick, I think. That uh, feels like know, it's B- just B- minus, maybe. <laughs> so, all right. That's yeah. that's my worst pick so far. I'm feeling good, Sean. Who's your fourth guy? Uh my fourth guy going up a little bit in salary, uh eighty nine hundred dollars. Mm. You know him, you love him. Second rank short game in the field, and you can see why he's first in bogey avoidance. Please welcome to the squad Jason Day. Just won a tournament in Dallas. Capper, I know you gotta be loving this Jason Day value play at eighty nine hundred dollars. Tell me why I'm a, why I'm a genius here. So I actually don't I don't hate it. Mm. Um I'm just curious to see where his ownership's going to end up at, right? So this is kind of like the weird dead zone uh, with golf DFS. Like you, you're going to have Uber Chalk guys um, up at the up the high nines, and then this is the range that like people skip over. It kind of equals out. I think I would rather Sunjay if uh, if it's a hundred dollars difference and the ownership's going to be within two percent, and almost DJ too. Like I think DJ's kind of going under the radar here. I thought he was going to be a lot more popular. Um, I don't hate it by any means. I don't like, I don't like it based on the scar tissue I have from Jason day after coming off of a win. Uh, he hasn't been good in a very long time. He clearly doesn't care about golf. Only so. guy to ever get kicked off the, the drip squad. We just <laughs> talked about it. Say, and it gets worse, Sean, 
So has a daughter named Lucy, but also has children named Dash, Arrow, and Oz. Steve, how say you? I mean, you know, honestly, he's got a lot of things that we kind of point out with Adam Scott that he is, you know, that Jason Day has too. I mean, really good around the green, good out of bunkers, you know, good putting numbers recently. Uh, kind, of, he's hitting his irons pretty well, but on some of the proximity ranges I looked at, he has not been all that strong. So obviously, coming off a win here. I mean, I, I can see it from the fact that if everybody's missing greens and struggling, he definitely has the game in order to get up and down uh, to, uh, you know, overcome that. Um, I don't know. I've just never really been a big. Well, that's actually not true. I used to be a big Jason Day fan. <laughs> then he burned me over and over. And then I missed out on the outright last week. So I'm just uh, sure bitter about him. I mean, it's, 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 it's depending on what the ownership shakes out as. Uh, if it's low owned for him. Um, I don't mind the play, I guess. Should I should I switch it to Dustin Johnson? No, be strong. Mm. Should I Make should I ch- Capper, what about you? I would I would switch it. And so let me ask you something about Scott. So you so Steve, you're saying he you're are you not seeing the same numbers I'm seeing? Uh-oh. The around the green stuff? Yeah, dude. He's he's a hundred and a second in this field. He gained a lot at Byron Nelson, yeah, gained recently. at Wells Fargo, gained yeah. a ton of heritage, gained at the Masters, oh, wow. gained at Jesus the match Christ. play, gained a ton at Sony. Yeah, he's he lost, doing he lost it. All- he lost at the players, lost at the Genesis. I'm sorry. So no. I'm like, it's 24 oh. rounds. Yeah, we're in. I'm, yeah, I, I, I love this okay. play now. We're gonna compare notes after the fact. That, no, you're, <laughs> I, you're, you're, I, you're incorrect I, on that. Assertion. I love. I love my. It's not uh, me. I'm not making the stats. Like, okay, I'm, well, uh, then maybe I need to take a look at. Capper, what are you pulling this from your model or from the the real model? All right, uh, let's let's, let's head to a different simulation. What do you got, Ryan? Well, this was the second. I I started my lineup uh, three weeks ago or whatever, mm. and it was Brooks. Kep- <laughs> I, for the record, I'm staying with my picks. Not uh, yeah, not moving course, up. That's course. the worst. Be, when, so you wait, so you're staying with Day? Yes, because I'm tra- I'm tracking this, and you need yes. to win, Sean. <laughs> da- Dash Oz, just and like Aaron. any Philadelphia sports team in a championship. Oh, oh, that wow. no need for that. Wow. You you want me to trot out Super Bowl Fifty Two? Be, be careful, Cap. Oh, no one cares about that. We won a Super Bowl after that. And the it was Bill, Boston Belichick's Cliff. fault for benching. Oh, you beat you beat you beat uh, Jared Goff. The Boston the Boston Cliff is coming. I, I'll be very careful. <laughs> oh, All right, so uh, yeah, like I said, I, I made this lineup weeks ago, and it had Ricky Fowler in it. He's only finished outside the top twenty uh, once in his last nine events. Sean, pretty impressive, and. He didn't play in the Masters, so maybe we can call this like a chip on his shoulder, getting back to the majors. Got to show out, and he's one of my guys. This was a my guy play. All right, you guys love Fowler, obviously seventy six hundred. Capper, yeah, I'm fine with it. Um, I mean, just kind of looking at your overall build, you're you're not like uber chalky, so you're fine. And uh, I actually like also I also have Ricky Fowler. Ryan. Holy shit, that's All my right. guy. Consistent right. swing. He's gained strokes in eight of his nine tournaments this season. And again, the PGA Championship is the only time he's showed up for majors. So I'm with you. I'm with you on Ricky Fowler here. Steve? Yeah, I, I like Ricky, man. Uh, like, he's a fine play. The only thing that worries me, he, he's showing pretty early mm. ownership at like 15, 16. Oh, no. So that could that could balloon to like 20 and to the moon in no time. <laughs> but yeah, listen, Ricky's a fine play, man. Like, I don't think he's going to win, but. Um, his form's a hell of a lot better now. He's definitely in a good spot with golf, so yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay, Steve? yeah, I mean, like his iron play is really good. Uh, that's been a big consistent thing about him ever since his kind of revitalization lately. Gained a lot of speed off the tee too. He hits it a mile, kind of sprays it a little bit though, a little bit more than my liking. Uh, good around the green numbers overall, but I don't have him as a very good bunker player, so he's gonna have to avoid that. But good putting on Donald Ross greens, good bent grass putter. Again, kind of depends on where the ownership shakes out. Uh, he's always a very popular name. There's going to be a lot of popular, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, general public playing DFS this week. Uh, so the ownership might creep up a little bit, but you know, just on paper with the resume, yeah, it's it, it, it's an established name. It's a guy who's battle tested and proven uh, at major championships before. So yeah, I, I, it, it's a fine play. Yeah. Steve, same price. <laughs> S- hold on, guys. So I'm going to ask you, Steve, same price. Patrick Reed, Ricky Follow. Uh, I mean, I, I just, I really like Reed this week. Same. I would take Reed over yeah. Fowler. Yeah. Sean, we're on an island over here. We're on Ricky Fowler Island. All right. So my last guy, I, you've given out five. Yep. All right. So my yep. last guy I had 6,900. I desperately wanted to use all 6,900. Nice. <laughs> but I didn't because I stumbled into a guy Ooh. late ad just Monday. Oh, 
a guy by the name of Eric Cole, who's oh. averaging over 300 yards off the tee. And, and Sean, apparently he's a confident ball striker with quote, no apparent holes in the boat. I assume that means no <laughs> holes in the game. Um, or maybe he's a boat owner and his boat actually floats, but a uh, little bit of a punt play here. Eric Cole, 6,800. Get ready to play the sword sound effect, Steve. Hmm. <laughs> well, that wasn't where I thought you were going to go with the late ad. Damn it. Uh, there's a, another kind of trendy guy. I, I got the wrong the late ad guy. <laughs> so, I, all right. So give you the positives on Eric Cole first. I mean, good iron player overall, although his strengths are more from under 125 with his wedges mm -hmm. than his long iron game. Uh, good around the greens. So if he's missing a lot of these greens with his long irons, he can at least try and get up and down. Uh, I got him actually as pretty short as and inaccurate though. And I think that's a horrible combination this week, uh, -oh. uh for a guy at Oak Hill. So, um, I mean, honestly, looking at a lot of these guys who are rookies, the corn fairy tour guys, I don't really like a whole lot of them this week. Um, that's, uh, if he makes the cut, I think that's probably <laughs> a win for him. Yeah, I would agree. I'm, I, I like Cole, uh, like I've, I've, Bet him in numerous spots, but yeah, he's a Florida course guy. He's a rookie. I think he's like, what's he, what's he 34 or something like that? Uh -oh. Yeah, he's uh, an older guy. Yeah, he's an older cat. Like, he's a rookie, but he's older. He's it's been like that dude that came up to the Pirates after like 15 years. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, exactly, right, right right. exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly <laughs> right. All right, I'm all right. Uh, let's roll. Fuck it. Sean. Yeah, fuck all right. My, got, my last golfer, he is $6,900. Oh, Nice. Uh, he's actually second only to uh, Tony Finau in strokes gained approach to green. Uh, 12 birdies are better on par fours at the AT&T Byron Nelson. I, I'm sure you guys are aware the field average is only 6.8. He even shot a 62 in the third round of the players championship. Steve actually can Steve, can you guess who I'm talking about? It's Tom Hoagie. <laughs> yeah, there you go. What do you think uh, of him? So that's like comparing Josh <laughs> Allen to Rory McIlroy. You, you think Steve's not going to know the fucking I know, answer? I just question? I wanted to see how excited he was. He he just destroyed that trivia. <laughs> looked at you like what the fuck? They hailed it like a garbage plate that you would at two a.m. Uh, <laughs> talk to me about Tom Hoagie. Well, I mean, look, I, I I think when you have these shorter guys off the tee, they definitely have a lot less room for error. They basically have to hit a high volume of fairways. But if you can be a good long iron player like Tom Hoagie is, I mean, he's pretty good from several ranges. Then he can overcome that. The problem, though, is that I think the driving accuracy rates with how far some of these targets are. Uh, you know, in, in 2013, it was 55%. I think it's going to be a little lower, closer to 50%. So he's going to really need to beat the field a lot in fairways. If he's not, he is really deficient around the green. So he really has a very fine line to walk this week. Uh, I think you're playing a little bit with fire, but I don't think a lot of people are probably going to be using Tom Hoagie considering the narrative about what's going to work this week. So, uh, I mean, that is definitely a pivot. <laughs> that is definitely a pivot. Come on, you got you guys. We, hey, when we pick popular guys, oh, that's a lot of that's a lot of ownership. When we pick unpopular guys, uh, oh, hey, I don't know if I go him. I don't know. Uh, Cap or what that's do you got? Excellent. Yeah, I mean, just to kind of piggyback off of what he said, he's a really good short wedge. Like he's short iron player, right? Like wedges and in, he's he's a magician. Uh, this this course is going to require long irons, and he is not as proficient with his long irons as he is a short. Uh, and yeah, man, I don't know a guy who makes this much money on golf and still has those teeth. Like for me, if, if you don't know, oh, just wow. Google Google uh, Tom Hoagie teeth and be okay, like, why I'm haven't you like, fixed those yet? I'm, I'm and uh, um, I love Hoagie. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna disparage my boy. He is. Tom. He listen. He is. A, he's a D Gen man. Like that. That's the thing. Like <laughs> yep, he loves his crap. He, he dude. He, Oh, he come goes. On. Through, he's gonna he, be. A, he's probably gonna be a turning stone. Uh, that's just, the problem. I, like <laughs> I like to play him with his no casinos around because if there's a casino <laughs> around, he's fucked. He's just gonna go gamble all fucking. Yeah, night. turning stone is about two and a half hours. Well, about two hours from here. Del Lago is about forty five oh, yeah. minutes yeah, though. That's, so that's, that's right down. Or, or if he just goes to the horse track, they only got slots there though. But he can <laughs> wait, there's a horse. Quick. Wait, we got a horse track. It's Finger Lakes Racetrack. Yeah, that's I think the only. Uh, it, I mean, we're not gonna go to it, but. It's actually near where you're staying, by the way. So if you want to spend Saturday going to the horse track, you can do that before you fly. I'm just gonna go to the I'm just gonna go to the fucking airport. I'm gonna be hungover. First okay. first ever uh, roulette table hit 
for me was a turning stone trip. Mm, we used really? to go out fry, fry, we, we would it was 18 to gamble they wouldn't serve alcohol on the floor and so we would we would leave at like on the you know Friday night we'd drive through the night gamble all night and then just drive home and hopefully had someone had money for that fucking toll was, there was like a twenty dollar toll on the way back and it was like oh shit someone's got to have some money to pay the fucking toll so we did that we did that in Montreal from Boston because it was only like a six hour yeah. ride and you can go drink and go to titty bars. Like it was, uh, it was amazing. It's a baby fucking, fucking wheel, man. Yeah, uh, uh, Montreal is a fun town if you're 18 or 19. Uh, one hundred percent. So Kramer, you gave out your full lineup for those keeping at home. My uh, Tony Finau, Cam Young, Jason Day, Joaquin Neiman, Ricky Fowler, and Tom Hoagie. And if you missed it, rewind. It, or actually, if you're listening on the podcast, definitely go to YouTube and watch the reaction when you give out uh, Cam Young. That was great. Kepka, Cantley, Neiman, Adam Scott, Fowler, and Eric Cole. Uh, that'll be the Millie Maker winner, right? So there. for my my mm. bets, uh, give me Finau outright twenty two to one. Give me Ricky Fowler top ten uh, plus four fifty. Give me Joaquin Neiman seventy to one and Tom Hoagie to shock the world at two hundred to one for my long shot bets. There, Kramer, what do you got for the? If films? you Google Tom Hoagie teeth, the first thing that comes up is an article: Tom Hoagie's teeth. What happened to his teeth? Uh, <laughs> that's. I mean, that's that's a tough. Well, you almost got to figure something out to get that off the first page of Google. Uh, I'm with you, although I played Ricky Fowler at plus two twenty to be in the top 20. Okay. Ooh, um, I like that. I like that. Uh, I also, am going to play my guy Brooks, obviously uh, outright. I'm also going to play, uh, you know what? Can't lay outright. Let's and then go. Uh, we had uh Neiman. What was the Neiman? T- I don't have the price in front of me, but I had Neiman top 20 as well. Okay. Are you looking at can't, can't, uh, so can't lay outright? Yeah. Those were the two. Like the it. two outrights were Brooks and and uh, and Cantley, and then like oh, here's the other one. Uh, Tom Kim. He seems to be uh, all the sharps are, are buzzing around him. So I have a Tom Kim plus or a top twenty as well. What fucking shops are buzzing around Tom Kim? Uh, <laughs> they must not watch my video then. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cancel. No, I, I fuck. I already made that bet. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> hey. Make sure you check out the boys. Uh, check them out for their live event coming up here at the Big Oak Driving Range in East Rochester, New York, Friday night. Make sure you subscribe to the Golf Gambling Podcast. Follow them on Twitter at Golf Gambling Pod for all the hijinks uh, this weekend. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Capper. As always, uh, yeah. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Smash. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the Money Green, and he is Ryan. There's no way I'm laying chalk with Cam Kerr. <laughs> Kramer, let <laughs> it ride. <laughs>